Hello guys, welcome to Study IQ. I'm Safir. In this session, we're going to talk about two very important concepts, that is quantitative easing and the tapering of quantitative easing. Guys, this is going to be a very important topic for your prelims as well as mains also. And very technical concept. When I was preparing for uh, you know my exam, at that time, I faced a lot of difficulty in understanding this because that's the time, you know, after that financial crisis, there was quantitative easing. There's nothing, nothing but the stimulus package. And then in 2013, this uh, tapering news and that led to a lot of issues and the markets have collapsed. So much of capital has been lost and that was a big issue. So a lot of things connected with this, like what is happening when they are selling bonds and buying bonds? How is it affecting interest? How is it affecting investment there? And how these investments are coming here and how this investment is taken back? Why it is called as flight of capital? And all these things are so much uh, connected. And once you understood uh, it is going to be very simple. Otherwise, it's slightly technical. But guys, it is very simple and similar to the open market operations done by RBA, something which we have discussed before. Right? I'll be talking about that also. Guys, uh, one of my mentor always used to tell that if you want to help someone, make it simple. And if you want to impress someone, then you can make it difficult. So I just want to help you. Whatever difficulty that I have faced and over a period of time, whatever learning that I had, and that is what I'm going to share. So the topic is quantitative easing. So before I discuss about quantitative easing, I can talk about open market operations done by RBI. Then it is going to be very simple. But in simple terms, if I need to tell you what is quantitative easing, easing, right? It's just like, uh, you know, uh, giving money means increasing money supply. So this is something which is done to promote growth as a stimulus measure like I've told you, it was done after the uh, 2008 crisis, right? That was a great recession. There was a great depression, 1929-30. And that depression was due to lack of demand. So to promote demand, you will be promoting, you know, coming up with some stimulus packages. Same way, here also, you have to come up with some stimulus packages to promote the growth. So it is nothing but increasing money supply. And it is mostly done by the developed countries. Okay, so developed countries, not in developing countries, because in developed countries, why they need to increase money supply? Because they need to increase the demand. If there is no demand, the issue is the problem with demand, right? The key nation unemployment we discussed before related to demand. So issue is the demand when it comes to developed countries. So you need to increase the demand. So once you increase the demand, growth will be there. Guys, remember one thing always. In case of developed countries, their growth prospect and everything depends on demand. In case of developing countries, the growth is completely relying upon the supply. The reason is, in case of developed countries, the supply is at the highest level. Their production capacity have reached at its maximum potential. They don't have any shortage. They don't have any problem with the supply. They don't have any problem with infrastructure or investment or capital formation or anything. That side, they are very, very much, you know, at the high potential. The problem is with the demand. When it comes to developing countries, no capital formation, no investment, no infrastructure. Supply side is a problem. Demand side, absolutely there is no problem, right? Because uh, you, population itself is there. So demand side, there is no problem. So when it comes to developing countries, supply is very important. You should promote supply. When it comes to developed countries, you should go for promoting demand. That means you have to increase the money supply. If no demand, it will affect the growth. So when there is no demand and excess, excess is there, supply is there, what will happen? The firms will try to cut down the production. Then what will happen? It lead to unemployment poverty situation. So they never want the demand to come down it will be very bad for them. So financial crisis, the demand have uh, come down, recession, great recession, and then they want to improve the demand. So what is quantitative easing? It is done to promote or increase the demand by increasing money supply, increasing money supply. Now, if I tell you this is pursued by the developed countries, you understood the logic. I expect that you understood the logic because when it comes to developing countries, there is absolutely no problem with the demand. Demand is high, always high. What the, only the problem is with supply. Shortage is the problem when it comes to developing. Developed excess is the problem. And because of that excess, they may cut down production if there is no demand. 
So that is their concern. So developed countries, demand is the problem. Developing countries, supply is the problem. Why? Supply is very less. Here, supply at its maximum potential. Okay, so money supply, they will try to increase. Now, how they increase money supply? Because before that, let me talk about open market operations done by RBI. What RBI will do in open market operations? RBI will buy and sell bonds or GSEX. Okay. So RBI will buy or sell the government security. Now, if RBI want to go for a contractionary policy, tight money policy, means sucking out money, money supply need to be reduced. In that situation, what they will do? They will sell, right? They will sell the bonds, sell the GSEC. If you need to reduce money supply, when you sell, what will happen? You sold it and the public will buy it. When the public is buying the government security means public is lending to the government. So money from the economy is going. So money is actually sucked out. So that is what actually happening here. Now, if you need to pump in money in the economy, that means if you need to increase money supply, what you need to do, you have to buy buy the government securities, right? So when you buy, you will pay money, RBA will pay money and will buy it. So you that is what actually done in open market operation. This is what, see, selling means reducing money supply, contractionary policy. Buying means increasing money supply, expansionary policy. So expansionary policy is done to promote the demand. So here in this uh, topic, we are going to talk about increasing demand. So what they do here also, the bonds will be buying, right? The Fed Reserve, right? The central bank uh, of like uh, US, Japan, EU, these developed countries, the Fed Reserve or the central bank, they buy the bonds from the financial institutions. They purchase the bonds. So when they purchase the bonds, what is actually happening? They are pumping money so money supply will increase and this money supply will increase the purchasing power this will increase the demand and when the demand is high the production will be higher production is always higher and demand is also there so there will be growth so means you can recover from that recession and growth will be there so this is the idea this is a main this is what you need to know why quantitative easing it is a stimulus measure so what you are actually doing, you are pumping money. Money supply is increasing because you need to increase the demand. Once you increase the demand, growth will be there. So if you want, just write one line. It is an unconventional monetary policy measure. It's a monetary policy measure, right? There are two types, contractionary and expansionary. This is an expansionary monetary policy measure. Unconventional monetary policy measure, which seek to stimulate economic growth or counter recession by increasing aggregate demand in the economy. So we have, I've told you how they are going to increase the demand also. So first you're trying to increase the demand. Now how they are going to increase the demand? You need to increase the money supply. How you're going to increase the money supply? Buy back the bonds, pump the money. Okay, for that, right? Under quantitative easing, central bank purchases, buy back, a predetermined value of bonds from financial institutions for a predetermined time period. One more point you can mention, it is pursued by developed countries. The reason, the logic you understood. So that understanding is fine. Okay. So in developing countries, already demand is there. Now, if you still promote demand, what will happen? It will be like Argentina or, uh, you know, uh, Sri Lanka like that. It is, it is going to lead to hyperinflation. In developing countries, already there is inflation due to demand, demand pull inflation. If you further increase the demand, it lead to hyperinflation. That is not good, right? So... Here, what central bank is doing? Central bank buy bonds. Now, guys, when central bank buy bonds, what will happen is, firstly, money supply will increase. Obviously, money is pumped in. So the aggregate demand in the, I'm not saying demand, aggregate demand, because I'm talking about macroeconomic concept now. So aggregate demand increase. So economic growth will increase. On the other side, if you see, now, this is going to be a prelims question. When the central bank buy back bonds, what will happen with the interest rate? How is it connected with interest rate? So 
interest now remember this guys interest rate reduce i repeat when even rbi also when you go for open market operations right when you are buying back bonds actually interest rate will reduce the reason why interest rate is reducing if you want i can explain because now central bank is buying bonds then what will happen with the demand of bonds guys the demand for bonds will increase because central bank buying back the bonds so demand for bond will increase okay means the government security or bonds so what will happen with the price of the bond price of the bond will also increase right so the price of the bond will increase perfect so what is interest what is the return that you are getting on the bond like like see guys let's say let's talk about government security what is the return if you are holding a government security there will be something like a face value 100 and when rbi is going and selling in the open market in open market operation there will be an auction so uh, maybe sbi different financial institutions right sbi will tell you 92 they will go for auction and icici like 93 hdfc will go for 94 right, right? punjab national bank will say 95 so rbi is auctioning in the open market and rbi will give it to whom rbi will give it to punjab national bank why because they are offering more so here you can see because of the demand the bond price is increasing bond price is increase so here it is the bond price is higher here this is the bond price is lower they did not get it you got it when bond price is 95 it is actually high compared to 92 93 94 the bond price is high so the idea is punjab national bank is buying this 100 face this is what face value 100 is a face value bond okay by paying 95 what is the difference between face value and the actual value 5 rupees the difference and this is a return so this is a interest now understand the situation instead of 95 if some other bank like uh, hsbc or some other bank is saying that 96 now what happened rbi will sell it to that 96 then what is the difference between face value and 96 196 4 so what happened with this return from 5 it have come down to 4 why it happened when the price of bond is going higher return on bond will come down it is normal right when the price of something goes higher return will come down so that's exactly what happened why the price of bond is going higher it is because of the demand for bond is high why demand is high because fed reserve is now buying back bonds so demand for bond is high price of bond is high difference between the face value and the price is very less and that is the interest so i hope you understood why i told you when you go for buying back bonds interest rate will reduce is it a good thing yes interest rate if it is reduced what will happen the firms will get money at a cheaper interest rate so that will lead to increase in investment and this increase in investment also will promote growth so on one side you are getting the demand side issue fulfilled and the other side you are also getting savings and further investment and that also is going to promote growth so this is what actually you are going to get from quantitative easing so from their perspective from this developed countries perspective now i told you interest rate has come down how this is going to affect countries like india now guys countries like india always the interest is higher right because always inflation is there interest is higher there the interest is like 1% or even 0.5% or like that only but when it comes to india the interest is higher so they get this at a very low interest rate already the interest is higher now when rbi buying back bonds the interest rate further reduce so they get money at a very low interest rate let's say 1% and this huge money is with you all these financial institutions they have huge money with them with a very low interest rate what they can do now they can think of investing in developing countries where they get much more return they can come uh, as fdi they can come as fis they can invest in the stock exchanges as fis they can buy the shares they can play in equity they can play in uh, uh, index funds and everywhere they can invest so this is what actually going to happen these money that they got will fly that will go to the developing countries from their perspective it is higher return here they are getting at a lower price 
the fund is at a lower interest rate they are coming and investing it in developing countries is it good for the country for us is it good in the beginning okay it is good because forex is coming but it is an obligation especially fii's when they are investing in stock exchange they can take it back at any point of time that lead to flight of capital and that's exactly what happened in 2013 around 79000 crore we lost in capital market 79000 crore guys so that's a massive flight of capital so that is a very dangerous uh, thing because see fdi is okay it will take some time but fii they can take it away at any point of time they can just sell it right this, whether it is a stocks or index or whatever it is they can just sell it if, even if it is derivative trading in futures and options or everywhere simply sell it take the money go back that lead to flight of capital flight of capital that also badly affect our forex so this is not considered desirable so when will they take it back that is what i want to discuss as tapering of quantitative easing so when they reverse this there the return is going to be higher interest rate is going to be higher when there is a tapering of this exactly opposite will happen then rather than investing here they will take it and they will invest there because there either they are getting better return or when they are taking money it is expensive for them so for these two reasons okay we'll come to tapering but let me uh, write it down here uh, in case of india uh, you can write advantages and disadvantages what will happen it will increase the foreign investment you can write in your own lines and language guys it will increase the foreign investment so fdis will come right companies will come and invest and fii's like uh, uh, portfolio investors will come right and uh, more money is with the foreign finan- foreign institutions anyway so what will happen forex will increase now forex will increase is actually a good sign for rupee rupee will appreciate how let's see this is demand for dollar this is supply of dollar okay now forex is increasing now this is the current situation let's say 75 is the price of dollar now in terms of rupee so now what is happening is the supply of dollar is increased means supply curve shift rightward so supply increased now you can see what is the new equilibrium can you see rupee now 75 to let's say 70 so rupee appreciated so guys these things are very much connected when foreign investors comes they'll come with dollar that means massive forex will be pumped in that will go as investment in fdi fii's forex will increase that will appreciate rupee okay so this will lead to appreciation of rupee what if they take it back they demand huge forex that lead to massive depreciation of rupee that's what happened in 2013 when they take it back they demand dollar so the exact opposite will happen right like uh, let's say this is the demand for dollar and this is the supply of dollar so when they take it back and they sell it and take it back they will they cannot take it in terms of rupee they'll convert into dollar and they will take back only dollar so s- demand for dollar will increase. now if this is the current equilibrium let's say 75 and demand for dollar is increased like this so you can see now it is let's say 80 so that lead to massive depreciation of rupee so easing will lead to appreciation of rupee tapering will lead to depreciation of rupee easing will pump the money in developing countries like india as fdi fii etc tapering will take out money suck out money from developing countries that lead to flight of capital so why quantitative easing is not considered good is because any point of time they can go for the reverse if the fed reserve go for the reverse that is tapering we will be suffering right so that is why the problem is all about marginal positive impact is there when it comes to export and everything but not much big okay so it's positive uh, in the short term but not long term because it's a stimulus ultimately what is this quantitative easing is just a stimulus which is given there once you recover from that particular issue the stimulus will be taken then once the stimulus is taken who is going to suffer whatever we have received we will have to give it back and uh, you know 2013 if you just search taper tantrum 2013 you will come to know what massive loss was there in the capital market around 80000 crore capital have taken 
Okay, so I hope uh, guys you understood this. It will create volatility in the market, uncertainty. Sensex will come down, Nifty will come down, and all stocks will be affected. All companies will be affected. The domestic firms will be affected. The uh, the uh, investors will be affected. You, me, and everybody will be affected. Okay, because these are big players, right? They can pump huge money and they can make the move in the market anyways, either upside or downside. When they come with money, they will make a upside move. And when they take it out, they'll make a downside move, like inverted V or this V, like that they can do. So let's look into tapering. Guys, tapering, nothing much to discuss. We have done the easing for stimulus. Now there is demand and everything. So now the demand situation is back, growth is there, recovered from that recession. You can slowly and gradually take that stimulus package back. So that is what you mean by tapering. So when you do this, what will happen? You will sell bonds or you'll stop buying bonds. You, it's like that only. You cannot do exact reverse immediately. You will stop buying bonds. Okay. So money supply will slowly come down and then the reverse effect will come. For the developing countries, how it will affect? Flight of capital. This foreign investments and all will be taken away because now interest in uh, developed countries is also going higher. Right? Because bond, the demand for bond has come down. Price of bond will come down. So the return on bond invest, uh, uh, the return, that means the interest also will, come, uh, will uh, increase. When the price is coming down, the difference between face value and the price will increase. So the return will increase. That means the interest will increase. So it is better for them to invest there. Secondly, it is expensive for them to get money from there and invest here. Because of these reasons lead to flight of capital. So it is the reverse effect. The foreign investments will come down. Forex will come down. Depreciation of rupee. Okay. And stock exchange will crash. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you can comment below. See you soon in the next session. Thank you, guys.